in Salt Valley, there are really two major amateur radio frequencies that a lot of people use. And we say that they're the 2 meter or the 70 centimeter. All that is is the wavelength of the frequency. Don't worry about that. Just remember there's two. And so generally, I like to buy radios that can operate on both of them. So a dual band. You look for a dual band on the radio, that's that. That's them. You can get a tri-band or a quad-band or all these other ones. Dual band is what you're looking for. Any questions? Give me a call. We can talk about radio. But these are different antennas that will be <coughs> capable, able for me to use. And what's the two things we need to know about transmitting? Is the antenna and the tower, right? Antenna height and antenna size. So this is this one. So that antenna there can plug into this radio. Which antenna is going to be more powerful? Right one or left one? Your right or your left? Your right. Yeah, that's that's kind of nice, huh? So yeah, I can get a long ways with this guy. And okay, let's do another comparison. Right? Okay. Now for a trivia question. An airplane. How many watts would an airplane need to transmit on if they're taking off or they're in the middle of the Pacific and need to contact Japan? Or they're coming in from Japan into the United States and they need to contact the airport in San Francisco. How many watts are they transmitting on? Probably pretty low because they're going to go through a satellite. They're not going to go from a satellite. Can you give me a high five? Watts? Five watts. Which is the same power as this guy right here, right? What's the difference? They're high. How high you are. Your altitude determines your attitude, attitude right? They're really high. They only need five watts because heavens, they're 30,000 feet, right? You know, I'm seven. <laughs> Seven-ish, okay? So, the highness, the height of the uh, antenna, and the power, and the, and the size. Okay, now... Well, what's the power then on this one? For, what are you using for power? Power is all generated from the radio, oh. okay? And it so still has the, five watts. That's still why you need the um, solar panel to charge well, this. To charge it up. So, no matter how big the antenna is, it can, the maximum output is whatever your radio can generate. That's its maximum. The difference, though, is the efficiency of the antenna. Right? This one, which is made to get the most gain, or the most output, and the highest efficiency, is far better than this one. Right? Size matters. Kind of size matters. So it's the output, but it's the efficiency of the antenna. The more efficient, the more output, the more watt it can deliver to the outside world. Okay? Any other questions? Oh, come on now. There's been no questions at all tonight. Yes? You need to talk about the class that you did. Did you? No, I, I haven't yet, uh, but, I, but I will. <coughs> okay. In, in preparation for, for you to perhaps practice and understand some use of the amateur radio, we're going to have an amateur radio class. It's called a technician class. It is November 9th, no. 8th. 11th, is it the 11th and 12th and then the 18th and 19th? 11th, 12th, and 18th and 19th. So it's a Friday night and a Saturday, a Friday night and a Saturday. 11th and 12th, 11th is uh, from like 7.30, 9.30, two hours, two and a half hours, something like that. And Saturday from 8 a.m. 
till mid-afternoon time frame. Okay, it's kind of long. It's a commitment. Okay, it's a commitment. And then you repeat that again. This is my wife over here who sat through the class, had a great time at it. And, and I, I think we're going to appreciate breaking it up uh, in, into a four-day versus two-day break. In the following Friday, Saturday, we repeat this session again. Not repeat, excuse me. We ate same time frames, new information. Oh, I thought we were doing two separate classes. No, no, it's all one class. It's all one class. Uh, the, the teachers, they have a fairly high success rate. They go over the exam, basically the exam, uh, which means a lot of the theory you're going to miss out on. So we would recommend getting a book and studying the theory behind the exam questions. Right? There's some value of learning the, the theory with the exam. But honestly, a lot of the theory you're really not going to use most of the time unless you really get into some of the amateur radio stuff. So if you start making your own antennas or designing some of your own uh, equipment, right, some of that information you just really don't, don't use. I haven't used most of that information yet. I want to, but not yet. So going over the test questions to get you to pass the test, to get you on air, and use exactly what you want to use, right? Most people, they just want to get on air for emergency communications. I, used to, I took the class in April. Okay, so you was using our, was you in our class? No, I, I uh, went down in the other state. Okay, oh, that's right, you went down there. Okay, so you have a concealed carry permit <laughs> for, for amateur radios, right? We went, I think we went six weeks, we did. Yeah, you, you, you did it in the evenings. How was it? <laughs> my, my daughter, my... Okay. okay. Was it mind numbing? No, I thought I found it interesting. Okay. Was it difficult? I, it was, you had to study. Okay, how to study. Did I not say that? <laughs> yes. But I, I'm more into that. She has she has no uh, technical bone in her body. <laughs> She's an English major, likes to write. She passed it. Okay. So it's doable. It's doable. Okay, it's doable. So at the end of the last day on Saturday, we'll have the exam there. The exam people come in, they're commissioned from the ARRL, which is an organization authorized by the FCC, to do the test. And so it's, it's kind of a formalized test. It's not timed. You just come in, sit down, and take your exam, and voila, you pass. They'll let you know right there. Two weeks, you get something in the mail saying, hey, this is your good call sign, which is or this WA7YLI is up here. In a little while, we're going to try to make contact with him. Uh, my, my call sign is KF7JAU, and your call sign is? No, I thought my head. I you, you had on your concealed care permit. Yeah, I don't. It's in there. And your call sign is? KF7HAW. KF7HAW. Okay. class is at the building it's over not there hopefully if they were busy so we're still looking for a we're home still for looking it. for a place uh -huh. hope i'm gonna try here next okay okay so let's see if we can make contact with this guy this is kf7 jau calling wa7 yli so did you hear that beeping sound mm -hmm. i just woke up Thank you, WA7YLI. Yes, I am inside of a building. Use my rubber ducky antenna. And uh, we have now in front of me a classroom of people uh, looking at wonderment of all the different things we can do with amateur radio. Is there any comments you'd like to make about amateur radio operation? Well, Okay, roger that. Uh, hold on for a moment. I'm going to try a different antenna. Please hold on for a moment while I go off air. This is KF7JAU. Okay, you got about half of that. So 